The Prussian drew Monsieur Sauvage aside and put the same question. Monsieur Sauvage did not answer. They stood side by side again. And the officer began to give commands. The soldiers raised their rifles. Then Morisot's glance happened to fall on a sack full of gudgeons which was lying on the grass a few steps away. A ray of sunshine made the little heap of still squirming fish gleam, and he almost weakened. In spite of his efforts, his eyes filled with tears. He stammered, Farewell, Monsieur Sauvage. Monsieur Sauvage answered, Farewell, Monsieur Morisot. They shook hands trembling from head to foot with a shudder which they could not control. The officer shouted, Fire! The twelve shots rang out together. Monsieur Sauvage fell straight forward like a log. Morisot, who was taller, tottered, half-turned, and fell crosswise on top of his comrade, face up, as the blood spurted from his torn shirt. 1240. The German gave more orders. His men scattered, then returned with rope and stones which they tied to the dead men's feet. Then they carried them to the bank. Mount Valerian continued to roar, its summit hidden now in a mountainous cloud of smoke. Two soldiers took Morisot by the head and the feet. Two others seized Monsieur Sauvage. They swung the bodies for a moment, then let go. They described an arc and plunged into the river feet first for the weights made them seem to be standing upright. There was a splash, the water trembled, then grew calm, while tiny wavelets spread to both shores. A little blood remained on the surface. The officer, still calm, said in a low voice, now the fish will have their turn. And he went back to the house. And all at once he caught sight of the sack of gudgeons in the grass. He picked it up, looked at it, smiled, shouted, Wilhelm! A soldier in a white apron ran out, and the Prussian threw him the catch of the two and said, Fry these little animals right away while they are still alive. They will be delicious. Then he lighted his pipe again. Okay, so clearly... <laughs> Right, some of you are sad already. So this is clearly a sad story. I mean, if, if we've got a happy ending in the uh, Damien Pythias text, we will not have a happy ending here. It is an interesting question. Let's just pause and ask this. At what point in the story did you figure out that this story was going to end tragically? Was it before the two men are captured, or was it after the two men were captured? Because if you go back and you look closely at the text, you will begin to get a sense that maybe this story is going to end somewhat tragically because of the necessity of conflict. How else can the story end if not somewhat tragically? Because other than that, it would just be a story about two friends going out to go fishing. And who wants to read a story about two guys that just go out fishing? Just to finish, note the ironies abound. In the same way that those fish that those guys caught were in that net, they themselves have now been caught. The request is, give me the password to get into the city. Notice that both of them, Marceau and Savage, won't say anything. They stand there side by side and die together. There's always been a question, of course, of whether in fact they knew the password and refused to give it, or if they recognized that even though they didn't know the password, it wouldn't have mattered and they were going to die anyway, and it was better to die together as two friends, the title of the story. And then dark irony at the end of the story, the fish that they caught will themselves now be eaten by the, the Prussians, by the Germans. End of story, level one. Level two A, messages, themes. Well, there's a, I think there's several potential here. Obviously, one is that war is hell, and it leads to terrible things happening, no doubt. But I think a second message is the power of friendship, no doubt. The willingness to stand side by side in the moment of their death and to not feel alone because they had the two there. Of course, we can do it to be all kinds of comparings of these two titles, Damien Pythias and this one. Notice that in the first text, we have the tyrant, the nasty, the bad guy, Dionysius, who is blown away by the friendship and decides to himself want to become a friend. Notice in a more modern text, we have a harsher reality. This Prussian, all he does is eat the fish. 
Of course, the symbolism is powerful in this, time, in this text. There's a, a good argument that you, could, that you could name this not two friends, but the, the fish. Because, of course, the fish become symbolic in the net, in the netting, silvery, and, of course, they're caught. They can't get away. They can't escape their fate in the same way that war often seems inevitable. What is for you at 3A the text that this story brought to mind? The idea that sometimes you're caught in a situation you can't get out of, but if you are there at least with a friend, you can survive. Is there a film that comes to mind for you in this regard? The willingness to at least be there with somebody who will take you, uh, take care of you while you're uh, while you're going through a bad situation. Finally, at 3B, what what do you think this story is suggesting about friendship, about fate or determinism, and the way things work out? When was a time in your life when you had to go through a situation, but you were able to get through that situation because you had a friend? because you were a friend. Well, we finished Unit 6 then in our sophomore study together. I hope that this has been a challenging and demanding text, and I hope it's been a challenging and demanding course of, of titles for you this year. Thank you.